dedicated to the strength of the nation. Proudly, we hail. Yes, proudly, we hail, starring Sterling Holloway in the Odyssey of Horace Blake, a United States Army and United States Air Force presentation. And now here is our producer, the well-known Hollywood showman, C.P. McGregor. Thank you, thank you very much, and greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to your Theater of Stars, where Hollywood's most outstanding figures of the motion picture world join us in stories we know you'll enjoy. Our star is the popular comedian, Sterling Holloway, and the title of our story, The Odyssey of Horace Glick. We'll have the curtain for Act One in just a moment, but first, here is your announcer. Choose the career that offers all five. The U.S. Army offers you these five keys to a successful future. One, a career of service to country. Two, the right job for you. Three, continuous training for planned advancement. Four, lifetime security. Five, travel and recreation. Yes, men, choose the career that offers all five. Find out about the five keys to a successful future at your nearest U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station. And now, once again, our producer. The curtain rises on Act One of The Odyssey of Horace Glick, starring Sterling Holloway as Horace Glick. You know, a story like this one about Horace Glick, it ain't nothing but pitiful, sad sadness. Just laying eyes on Horace Glick starts you weeping about little orphans and stray dogs. Horace looked like nothing in the book, Weed-colored hair sticking up like a beaten-out broom. Big brown eyes with a kind of wet sadness of coddled eggs. And a chin that looks like it melted in the sun and ran down on his neck. But this will stagger you. He's married. Yeah, Horace Glick's got a Mrs. Glick. And she ain't bad either. Which hands us guys a few things to figure out besides the horses. Well, as I get it, the whole story begins one morning at the screech of dawn. Horace is skipping around in the land of Nod, and the only commotion in the Glick bedroom is the clock ticking to itself and sort of crouching back, getting ready to spring. if you could see yourself mm-hmm. lurching around the room like you were on wires. Mm-hmm. Are you awake now? Mm-hmm. Uh, well, you I certainly think. don't look it. Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 oh, Gloria, you've done it again. If you wouldn't open your mouth uh, so wide, you couldn't lock your jaw. Uh, 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 well, come here uh, uh, so I can get them unsnapped. Uh, uh, now. Uh, Horace Glick, if you don't stop these morning convulsions of yours, you'll have me a stark lunatic. Oh. And you might as well shut the window as long as you're up. Okay, oh, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. One of these mornings, you'll either take a header out of the window or you'll lock your jaws open, and you never will get them shut. I live in holy terror every morning. Uh, Lavinia. Yes, dear. That clock, it must go. <clears throat> The clock? Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I can't stand it. Why does it have to ring like the anvil chorus? It doesn't. It has a very gentle bell. Yeah, as gentle as a five-alarm fire. It's very confusing. <sighs> it's a marvel the way you fly in the air like you'd been stabbed. Ooh. Oh, and stop rubbing your head. It hurts. Well, I shouldn't wonder. 
the way you go lurching around every morning, banging into the dresser and door jams. Uh, oh, I got awful bang this. Look, Lavinia. Hmm? Lumps. Well, I'm not at all surprised. Hmm. Hand me my robe and I'll go put the coffee on. <laughs> and don't stand there looking at me glassy eyed, Horace. It gives me the creeps. <laughs> Oh, my. Horace, will you please quit dawdling in the bathroom and come to breakfast before everything's stone cold? Coming, honey. Oh, oh dear angels, give me strength. <gasps> right, that's done. Uh, Lavinia. Yes? Is it within the bounds of probability that you might find a softer toothbrush for me? What's the matter with the one you've got? I just bought it day before yesterday. Bristles. What? Too noisy. Too noisy. Yeah, they clash against my teeth. <sighs> Too noisy. Well, of all the idiotic things I have ever listened to, who ever heard of a noisy toothbrush? I did. The one I've got clashes against my teeth. Gives me the jitters. I don't think you're really awake yet. Sit down to your breakfast. <laughs> I'm afraid your egg is about ruined. Uh. Lavinia. Yeah. What's that? What's what? That... That poofling sound. I'm sure I don't hear any poofling sound. Oh, yeah, you must listen to it. It goes, listen. Bunkle, 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 poofle. You, you don't mean the coffee percolator. Oh, is that what's going? Bunkle, 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 bunkle. Well, whatever it's going, it's percolating the coffee, if that's what you mean. Is there no other method of preparing coffee, Lavinia? Is there no other... Horace Glick, why? Too noisy. What's too noisy? All those burgles. Horace Glick. I can't help it. They give me the jitters. I think if anyone has the right to jitters in this house, it's me. Clashing toothbrush, noisy percolator. Oh, honey. Well, how do you manage to stand the awful crashing of the eggshells when you break your egg? Oh, don't. Oh, now stop your foolishness and finish your breakfast. Here's the paper. Stop, Lavinia. Now what? Take it away. Well, why? It just came. Take that paper away. Give me the jitters. Well, the news is no worse than usual. Why should this morning's paper give you the jitters? Oh, this morning's paper is worse than ever with all the crashing and the crunkling and, the, and that awful crash that oh. came from the sports page. Oh, too Horace, noisy. if you say that again, I'll scream. Oh, no. Please, Lavinia. Horace Glick. Uh, yes? I think we may as well face it. Face what? Face the fact that something is radically wrong with you. I know. <laughs> jitters. Well, jitters or plain common insanity, I want you to promise me something. Well, what? That before you come home tonight, you'll see a doctor. Oh, now, really, mm -hmm. You can take a streetcar at noon out to see Dr. Arnold. Oh, I couldn't possibly take a streetcar, Lavinia. Why? Well, streetcars, you know, they go... Uh, billy doo billy da billy doo billy da Clang, 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 fast, please. Oh, my wrong streetcar. Transfer. Jitters! <laughs> oh, very well, Mr. Glick. Then either walk or take a cab. But I want your promise. If you come home tonight without some reasonable excuse for your behavior, I'll pack up and leave. Oh, no, Lavinia. No, no, I won't. I'll run the vacuum cleaner all night. Oh, no, pack up and leave if you must. But don't, don't, don't run the vacuum cleaner, that awful... Zzz, zzz. Oh, no, jitters. <laughs> Sit down, Mr. Glick. Thank you. Now then, try to compose yourself and <laughs> tell me just exactly what it is that seems to be troubling you. <clears throat> noises. Uh, noises? <laughs> just, uh, just what sort of noises do you mean, Mr. Glick? Well, just noisy noises. Oh, oh, I see. Um, like, for example, the conversation of the little people <laughs> or the rustle of shadows. Maybe you need a doctor worse than I do. <laughs> oh, I never hear such things, but, uh, <laughs> but people sometimes do, you know. Really? Now, uh, tell me, uh, what noises seem to trouble you the most, Mr. Glick? Well, I want to brace myself for this. Uh, like, <clears throat> like, for instance, a leaky tap. It goes clip, clop, clop, drip, blop. <laughs> it gives me the jitters. Uh-huh, uh-huh, go on. And then... Uh, then this rain, the rain on the roof, on, on a soft roof, or it 
car roof or a tin roof. It goes pluck, crash, crang. Oh, no, Jimmis, please don't make me do it. Stop the rain. Stop it. Get it off that tin roof anyway. Extraordinary. Oh. Most extraordinary. I, I'll just make a note. Yes. Leaky tap. Yes. Rain. Yes. Yes. Doc, doc, would, please, would you mind using my pen? It doesn't scratch. Oh. See, mine doesn't go flat. <laughs> Oh, yes. Oh, yes, yes, of oh, course, Mr. Glick. Your uh, your auditory senses are quite acute, aren't they, Mr. Glick? No, I just have good hearing, that's all. Uh, yes, yes. Um, Mr. Glick, oft times something in our early life, our childhood, begins a pattern. Mm. Now, some occurrence results in psycho or mental quirks in later life. Mm. Now, do you recall any undue noises that gave you, shall I say, a, a fright when you were a child? When I was a child. Yes. Yeah, well, I, I remember once uh, a mosquito got too close to my ear when I was a child. It was, was having fun. Aha! Uh -huh. Anything else you recall, Mr. Glick? Oh, I was scared by a cement mixer once. Then, chunk, 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 Stop, yes. Please stop. Yes, Mr. Glick, yes. I, I think I get the idea. Yes, sir. Good. Uh, Splendid. Oh, uh, it was rather unpleasant. All that chunk, 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 Yes, chunk. yes, I know, I know. But yes. what I mean to say, Mr. Glick, is that I think we've struck the crux of your dilemma. Don't strike it too hard, please, Doc. No. It might make no. an awful In more. fact, I'm convinced that you're undoubtedly suffering from a condition which we might term sonophobia. Sono... Oh, no. or, or shall I say, fear of sound? Yes. Yes. Now, I can only recommend a long rest, absolute quiet, and uh, perhaps an ocean voyage. Seasick. Oh. Oh. Well, uh, in that case, perhaps a long trip to the mountains. No, oh, no. Coyotes. I beg your pardon. Coyotes. <laughs> yes, 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 of course, of course, Mr. Glick, I understand. Uh, however, please bear in mind that regardless of where you find them, Rest and complete quiet are imperative. Of course, in the valleys, the coyotes are going, hur, hur. <laughs> they're pretty bad, yes. too. Yes. Oh, well, incidentally, Mr. Glick, what is your occupation? I work in a broadcasting studio. Ah, yes, yes, I begin to understand. But um, what I mean to say is, what do you actually do? What is your job? Noises. I beg your pardon. I'm a sound effects engineer. Pause briefly for my story, The Odyssey of Horace Glick, starring Sterling Holloway, to bring you an important message from our government. Choose the career that offers all five. The U.S. Army offers you these five keys to a successful future. One, a career of service. In the Army, you'll be on a team with a tradition of patriotic service to the nation. Two, the right job for you. Scientific aptitude tests determine the job you're best suited for. Three, continuous training for planned advancement. Specialized training and educational courses prepare you for advancement. Then the Army's career plan assures you periodic promotions based on your skill and efficiency. Four, lifetime security. You as an Army man are guaranteed regular pay and sound retirement benefits. In sickness, your medical care is provided without cost and your regular pay continues. Five, travel and recreation. In the Army, you'll enjoy the finest recreational facilities and opportunities for worldwide travel. And remember, you have 30 days vacation with pay each year. Yes, choose the career that offers all five. Get full details at your nearest U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station. The curtain rises on act two of The Odyssey of Horace Glick, starring Sterling Holloway as Horace Glick. Maybe you see what I mean about this guy, Horace Glick, being a daffy character. So help me, the Goonie Bird even drove the dock nuts. Anyway, as I dope out the rest of this cockeyed story, Horace mooches for the broadcasting studios and makes a beeline for Mr. Johnson's office. Mr. Johnson is just the big shot of the network. You know, the guy that everybody laughs at his corny jokes and says, Yes, Mr. Johnson. No, Mr. Johnson. Why, of course, Mr. Johnson. But does Mr. Big Shot Johnson scare lame brain Horace Glick? Has kangaroos got feathers? So this guy, Horace, with holes in his head and sparrows flying in and out, takes Mr. Johnson's office like a beachhead. 
and sags plump in front of his eight-foot desk and don't even bat an eye. Well, I must say, Glick, your entrance is a trifle dramatic and uh, uh, unannounced. <laughs> I could even say a bit psychic, since I was on the very verge of sending for you. Uh, Mr. Johnson. Oh, it's all right, my boy. No apologies. Though it is customary to knock before entering my office. Yes, customary to knock before you enter the office. I've seen a doctor. Well, well, splendid capital. Wonderful people, doctors. Wonderful people. Couldn't do without yes, them. Yes, couldn't do without He says I've got sonophobia. Have you? Well, I hope I'm among the first to offer congratulations. Uh, I dare say that's an achievement, Glick. The doctor says it's noisy. Well, right up your alley, Glick. However, I should say not a very apt choice of words, noises. I should much prefer well-designed cacophony for a man of your profession. Oh, by the way, Glick, I heard your work on last night's whistle weight theater of the air. Yes. I've had it ever since I was a child, too. Well, of course, Glick. Talent always begins in the formulative years of your childhood. He said I should have complete rest and quiet. And I agree, my boy. I agree perfectly. I've always said rest and quiet are the two prerequisites of our best work. Uh. So often we're apt to light the candle at both ends, and the wax of our talents burneth low. Yes, indeed. Mr. Johnson... I have to go. Of course, of course, Glick. Duty calls, and I shan't hold you more than a second. <sighs> Glick, my boy, it's a pleasure to inform you that because of your diligence and effort, your salary will be increased 50% commencing Monday morning. Oh. And further, you're to become the new head of our sound effects department. Well, gee whiz, Mr. John. Tut, tut, my boy. <laughs> you needn't struggle for thanks. I think I know how happy you are. <laughs> Not, Mr. Johnson. Not? Not what, Glick? Happy. Huh? What was that? I'm rather miserable, as a matter of fact. You see, now I can't afford to quit, and I'll have them worse than ever now. Jitters, I mean. <laughs> You wouldn't believe it, a guy that screams about the noise of ants stamping their feet or butterflies flapping their wings getting a job like that. It's a dizzy, daffy story, and I'm stuck with it, but there he was in Studio C, hanging over a mess of sound effects like a wet mop and making a racket that gets stone-deaf statues plugging up their ears with cotton. The broadcast was on, and that goon Horace was smash in the middle of it, and I ain't being careless with that word smash. Look, Tracy, the crooks have set fire to the arsenal. Here comes the fire department. Step on it nice and up. Maybe we can hit the crooks off before they get away. There they are, Tracy. Stop in the name of the law. They ain't stopping, Lance and up. Let them have it with your tummy gun. I used your rifle. Okay. You asked for it, Muggs. What has happened now? Has the arsenal blown up? Did the crooks escape? And what about those intrepid minions of the law, Tracy and Lancelot? Listen next week to The Monster's Revenge. Brought to you by Blamphap. B-L-A-M-P-H-A-P. Remember the name? Blamphap. <laughs> That was a huh. terrific sound effect. Yeah, oh. boy, that's the best sound effect God, you've ever done. Well, Thanks, well, fellas. Well, congratulations, Lick. That was the finest piece of sound work I've heard in years of producing. Oh, it was nothing. <laughs> uh, now about next week's show, Lick. A uh, super duper. Now, the way I see it, the crooks escaped to their hideout where they've got an atomic bomb hidden. Yeah, atomic bomb. And when they set it off, it caused an earthquake and an avalanche and uh, uh, maybe even a tidal wave. Yeah, a tidal wave. Super terrific. Mr. Morley. What? What, got some more ideas for sound? Would you please stop tapping that pencil? It's noisy. Hmm. Who could that be? Hello, honey. Well, for goodness sake, I thought I heard someone at the door. Why didn't you use your key? Oh, I don't carry it. Why? It jangles on my keychain, you know, clank, clank. Oh, gracious. 
Well, come in out of the pouring rain before you get pneumonia and go wheeze, wheeze. <laughs> it's a joke. <laughs> yes. How long have you been standing out there? I don't know. But why didn't you knock louder? Noisy. Oh, here we go again. Well, take off your sopping coat and come into the living room. Dinner's about ready. Oh, and you needn't get that startled look on your face. There's no celery or soda crackers. The noisiest food I fixed is mashed potatoes. That's the nicest thing anyone ever did for me. You know, that screwy moose Horace, he ain't nothing if he ain't a fugitive from a squirrel cage. Well, the dizzy Daffy story goes on, and we're back in the Glick bedroom. Not a silly sound to be heard, except the ticking of the clock, and of course, the Philly Lou birds flying around in Horace's head, if you can hear them. And believe me, I'm getting so I can. Horace. Horace. Mm. Is there any good reason for you lying there with your head covered up like an ostrich? Mm. Well, may I ask what it is? Clock. What? Clock. Noisy. The clock is clear over here on my side of the bed, and you couldn't possibly hear it. Well, I can barely hear it myself. Oh, but, but listen. <laughs> it goes pick, tick, pick, tick, pick, tick, pick, tick, pick, tick, pick, tick, 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 Oh, all right. I'll put it on the floor under the bed. There. Now can you hear it? Going click, 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 click. Oh, Horace Glick, I've done everything in my power to be a good and patient wife, but I've just about reached the end of my rope. I'm sorry. Which reminds me, this morning you gave me your faithful promise to see a doctor. Did you? <laughs> well? Well, what? Well, what did he say? Who? The doctor. Not much. Well, exactly what? Oh, he just said I had sonophobia. You have what? Sonophobia. I'm allergic to sound, noises, noisy noises. You spent good money to find that out. Well, a six-year-old idiot child could have told you that. I don't know any. You don't know any what? Idiot children. Oh, I give up. Around six, that is. Uh, Lavinia. Now what is it? I've got an idea. Oh, don't tell me you've got another one. It just came to me. Well, what is it? I don't know exactly. I think I'll just lie here and stay awake. Well, what for? So that I can think about it. My idea, I mean. Came the next day. In fact, came 5 o'clock the next day, p.m., that is. And then, do you know what? You wouldn't believe it. At the Glick household came the ringing of the doorbell. I'm coming. <gasps> Hello. Horace Glick, is that you? Can't use my keys, don't carry them. Well, for heaven's sake, come in here before the neighbors see you and swear out a warrant for your commitment. I can see your lips move, but I can't hear what you're saying. What's that silly thing you've got on your head? Look what I've got on my head. I <laughs> am looking, and it's perfectly ghastly. I bought it at a sporting store. It's a football helmet. Well, take it off this instant. It's a foot <clears throat> football helmet. Take that silly thing off your head this minute. I can't hear a thing you say. Wait a minute, I'll take the football helmet off. Well, I should think so. Yeah. Uh, wait till I take the plugs out of my ears. Well, of all the ridiculous things I've ever seen or heard of in my life. Uh oh What's the matter? Too noisy. Put the plugs back in again. Put my football helmet back on again. Now it's not noisy. Oh, so that's it. Can you hear me? Horace, I said, can you hear me? Peace and quiet. No jitters. Oh, don't tell me this is going to be the answer. Wait a minute. We'll just find out. Horace, can you hear that? Peace and quiet. When are we going to have dinner? I'm hungry. Glory be, it's a miracle. That's what it is. Nothing but a miracle. Come into dinner, Horace. Oh, Lavinia! Lavin Lavinia, I forgot to kiss you when I came in. <laughs> so you did, honey. I said, so you did. Yeah. There. <laughs> you know, Lavinia, 
It's so nice to come home to peace and quiet. Not noisy and don't have the jitters. <laughs> The curtain falls in the final act of the Odyssey of Horace Glick. Our star, Sterling Holloway, will return for a curtain call after this timely message from Wendell Niles. Valuable professional assignments in the Army Medical Department are now available to a limited number of young doctors. In these positions, doctors have a chance to work closely with top specialists in the various fields of medicine and keep abreast of the newest developments and the finest modern medical equipment. In addition to regular pay and allowances, they receive $100 per month professional pay. For details, write to the Surgeon General, Department of the Army, Washington 25, D.C. Now, once again, our star and our producer. Sterling, I know that our radio audience must be happy to hear you in our theater, just as happy as we are to have you with us. Well, thanks, C.P. But how about the Army? Why, sure they're happy, and so is the Air Force, you being a next G.I. Yeah, that's what I mean. Say, did you know, C.P., that I was the first actor to be called into the service? No, I didn't. Oh, I sure was. And my number was the second to be called in the <clears throat> lottery. I didn't know that. But I guess the Army figured you had an important job to do, and they just wanted to see that you had plenty of time to get it done. Yeah, I'd believe that if it hadn't been the lottery. <laughs> you know, that's the first lottery I ever won. Oh, no. Oh, and I remember when it happened. Remember it well. Oh, I was out in the backyard, see, and my mom called me, and she said that the A and P man wanted to interview me. You mean the A and P news service? I found that out. I couldn't figure why the guy from the grocery store wanted to ask me questions. Well, you had a ticket that carried you all the way overseas. I recall you were with the Hey Rookie show. Mm -hmm. And uh, weren't you in Germany recently with the United States Air Force on the airlift? Yeah. The Air Forces flew us over, and we toured all of Germany. You didn't make that picture in Italy then, did you? You mean her a wonderful uh, lie? That's the one. I just saw it. You were great. <laughs> oh, thanks. No, I made that uh, before I went back on the airlift. Uh, tell our audience something about the picture. Maybe they haven't all seen it. Well, it's a Columbia release, CP. Uh, Janice Carter, Mark Platter in it, too. And, well, I hope all the folks like it. They will. Don't you worry. Incidentally, I think uh, your friends would like to hear what else you've been doing. Well, I've been doing a little writing and a little directing. I've written a couple of shows, and I'm going to produce one of them. We all wish you success and lots of it. Thanks, C.P. I can sure use it. And now, tell me, uh, what have you and my late employers got on the fire for next week? <laughs> well, next week, Sterling, and ladies and gentlemen, MacDonald Carey returns to our microphone to star in a highly dramatic story, Black Dust. Don't miss it. Great. I'll be listening. Well... So long, C.P. Goodbye, Sterling, and thanks for being with us. And be sure to join us next week, ladies and gentlemen, when MacDonald Carey will be our star in a dramatic story, Black Dust. Until then, thanks for listening, and cheerio from Hollywood. Sterling Holloway appeared through the courtesy of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, which arranges for the appearance of all stars on this program. The script was by Kimball S. Sant, with the music of Eddie Dunstetter. This program was transcribed in Hollywood for release at this time. Wendell Niles speaking. <laughs>